everybody. Hi, friends. Well, from beautiful Salt Lake City, Utah, it's Thank God I'm Atheist, the podcast. I'm Frank Feldman. And I'm Dan Beecher. And coming up on the show today, Dan. Oh, sadness. <laughs> There's no white smoke. There's no black smoke. Oh, okay. But a major religion just lost its its figurehead. <laughs> With a new one immediately yeah. set in place to take over. Yeah. And we're going to talk about it. Yeah. And if you don't know what we're talking about, boy, you haven't been watching the news. Well, I think a lot of people might not know what we're talking about because all they talk about is the fact that she was the queen mm. and not the fact that she's the head of the, uh, the Church of England. Anyway, we'll talk. We'll get, we'll we'll get, get to, to all of that. All that's coming up. All right. But in the meantime, we've got stories in the news to talk about. Yeah. Dan. Yes. You like you like you like pulling up a little show on Netflix every once in a while, right? I'm I'm a fan. Yeah. People yeah. Pe- this is it's it's all the rage these days. The streaming. I don't know if anyone does it, but it you <laughs> it's it's the streaming. People get together. It's the new hip and, thing. And uh you just order up shows on demand. It's really it's <laughs> wild. It's really crazy. Oh man, um, you cannot sound older than saying uh, using a phrase like "order up a show." On Netflix. <laughs> anyway, uh, Netflix has taken the world by storm, as we all know. Uh, but literally, like they're everywhere, right? Yeah. And uh, one of the places they are uh, doesn't really care so much for a lot of their content. Uh, that would be the Gulf Arab countries. Ooh. Of Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, Kuwait, Oman, Qatar. Uh, they make up the Six Nation Council, known as the Gulf Cooperation Council. No, known as the Arab Grumps. <laughs> and boy, howdy. Um, they have demanded that Netflix remove, quote unquote, offensive content. <laughs> that is currently available on the streaming service in their yeah. uh, region. And uh, it's not, it wouldn't be hard to guess. So I'm not even going to ask you to. Um, they are going after programs that show people that show people who are gay and lesbian. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, it, it doesn't have to be a promoting. Right. Just the existence. Well, the exist we in and of uh, ourselves, we are, promotion right you it's we pr- we are shameless self-promoters we gays <laughs> and lesbians and uh yeah so let's see apparently um saudi state television aired a video of an interview it conducted with a woman identified as a behavioral consultant uh who described netflix as being <laughs> quote An official sponsor of homosexuality. (laughs) I didn't know that I was being sponsored. (laughs) Right? Where's your check? Yes, please. Thank you. And uh, during the interview, they showed some uh, footage from a cartoon Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous uh, in which two women kissed, but the footage was blurred out. So don't worry about it. Oh, thank God. Um, Yeah. So, I mean, this is, you know, like they've, they've done this before. They've got all up in arms about the latest Disney Pixar movie, right? Oh, um, yeah. They're, they're very, very grumpy. Holy cow. Like, <laughs> what? I'm, first of all, apparently Netflix doesn't even have a major, like, um, uh, percentage of the market for streaming in, in the Arab world. Oh, interesting. Um, I mean, they're, they're there. They're present. They're probably a player, but there are others uh, that are more like state sponsored services that apparently are the kind of the go to ones. I don't know. This is just kind of what this article was sort of suggesting. And and I'm just like, Netflix, why do you don't don't kowtow? Yeah. Right. Like, just but they're they're, there. Look, Netflix just wants to make money. They don't care about the politics of the thing. Uh, I know. (laughs) <laughs> I know, but honestly, like Western corporations need to start standing up for Western values. I agree with you. I, mean, I really frankly, need I think, to. I think that somebody needs to get out there and start making a, an Arab language show 
that can be sort of streamed that can get through the uh through you know through the firewalls mm-hmm. of wherever that has gay characters in it yeah they should but honestly like all they need to do is make sure that the crown is dubbed in arabic it's so good <laughs> everybody's gonna want to watch it right and then they subscribe and then there's like other stuff that that gets them that gets them. that per- like perverts their values gotta love it <laughs> gotta love it Oh man, I'm I'm gonna take us to uh, Texas. All good things. Texas is basically our Arabian Peninsula. <laughs> uh, here it's on in a, the United it's States, it's on a Gulf. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, a ruling has just come come down by a Fort Worth based district judge, uh, Reed O'Connor. This is a guy who, back in 2018, ruled that the entire uh, American Care Act was invalid, which was a ruling <laughs> really? so extreme that the U.S. Supreme Court overturned his decision. But just know that he's like, this is a guy who who has who who has some pretty solid, like, like crazy Christian, uh, far right wing bona fides, mm-hmm. uh, and he has now ruled that. Uh, Forcing a company that has any religious affiliation at all, or even says the word religion three times fast, (laughs) uh, forcing that company to provide HIV prevention drugs uh, under the Affordable Care Act violates their their religious beliefs. Jesus. Uh, This was a lawsuit brought by a Texas employer uh, who did not want to provide PrEP in his company. Oh my God. That hurt his little religious feelings. I mean, he did it because uh, he doesn't like gay people. Man. Apparently he employs some gay people, right? Well, he's legally not allowed to, uh, openly not employ them. And, but you can, uh, openly deny them, uh, access to healthcare. Yeah. Yeah. That's really even, cool. Even while you're providing them with healthcare, you can also uh, choose, uh, according to this judge, you can choose which healthcare you can provide. And if it grosses you out and gives you the yuckies, then you can choose, you can opt out. I mean, that's most healthcare. Right? Most healthcare he, is disgusting. There's so much grosser healthcare than this. Why is he doing <laughs> I mean, as somebody who had uh, their over 45 colonoscopy not too long ago, yeah, there's disgusting health care out there. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Thank God for the people willing to do it. But oh, yeah, yeah. That's, it's, uh, it's, it's quite a thing. I mean, this is obviously, frankly, what should be happening in the courts is that there should be gay men and women. Gay, there should be people suing this employer mm-hmm. uh, for hate crimes. Yeah. Because that's what this is. This isn't you practicing your religion. Mm-mm. That has nothing to do with this. This is you gleefully hoping that gay people will die. Right. Well, it's, I just can't get over the fact that like our labor laws protect, you know, all these different various classes of people. Right. Right. And yet it's sort of classically American. Right. So, but once you're in, where are the protections, right? And, right. and where are the, where, how, where's the equal treatment, right? Yeah. Um, because I mean, that ultimately at the end of the day, you're providing all of your, the healthcare needs of your, of your straight, you know, employees. Yeah. And then you're picking and choosing which of the healthcare that you're going to pay for, for your gay employees. Well, like, and this is, no. you know, this is the same thing that's happened with, you know, abortion, mm-hmm. healthcare. This, yeah. It's just, it's, yeah, it, it's just, I don't like what they're doing and I'm, I feel I want to moralize about it. Uh-huh. So, uh, they, so I'm not going to provide that health care. Right. I don't think that they should be healthy in that way. <laughs> Amazing. Some fucked up shit. Yeah. All right. Oh, Dan, 
Yes. Here's a story that uh, starts off with a trigger warning. Oh. But at the end, makes you smile. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> the warning's out there. <laughs> okay, everybody. It, what, what, Brace okay. yourselves. Brace yourselves. It involves a Christian street preacher on, in Leeds. That's in the UK. And his name is David McConnell. Okay. Uh, he, uh, he's a regular street preacher, um, gets out there with a microphone, really makes a show of it, uh, and yells, you know, Christian shit at people. Yeah. And of course, as since it is Christian shit, um, some of it's hateful. Okay. Shocking. Shocking. What? No, that's not possible. And so after a very specific uh, incident um, that involves him and a, let's see, a, a member of the, tra- of the trans community who, I don't know, um, he, re- he regularly referred to this person who was trying to engage him, trying just to ask some polite questions. And there's video of it, right? Mm. Politely asking questions like, um, you know, God, what is God's stance on homosexuality, right? Cool. Just asking, just, hey, yeah. hey, tell me, right? And so this David McConnell fellow uh, starts referring to this person as, quote unquote, this gentleman, uh, and uh, proceeds to refer to them as a man in woman's clothing. Mm. And he says things like adulterers, drunkards, and homosexuals will not enter the kingdom of heaven. And apparently he crossed the line uh, (laughs) with regards to the UK's harassment laws by saying these things. And so he has been (laughs) tried and convicted and is sentenced to a 12 month community order with 80 hours of unpaid work uh, after being found guilty of harassment. And I'm, and, and did the judge get to choose where this person has to go do that work? <laughs> well, I don't know how all that works, but I just, I'm sitting, I just kind of read this article and I was like, this is remarkable, right? Like this guarantee essentially of, for, for people to be able to walk down the street and to be able to even engage with people and not have it turn nasty. Yeah, not not have it become a where the person with the microphone is yelling demeaning, ugly things at you. Yeah, right. Boy, wouldn't that be a thing? Wouldn't that be a thing? Just downright un-American is what that is. <laughs> Just, in the best way I can imagine. Yeah, exactly. Because street preachers, ugh, they're the worst, and they show up the last place you want them to be. <laughs> Wherever you're on vacation, somehow. <laughs> that's where the street preachers some cute little strand across along the beach and there's a fucking street preacher <laughs> n- just junking up the place i was literally in a my, the, my last encounter with someone that i would i don't know if i would consider them a street preacher that's pretty close to how i would define it but uh it was in uh what's the island off of southern california um Cor- Coronado? No. Start with the C. It's something island. Catalina. Catalina Island. I was there and suddenly we we're walking down the street. We hear this weird and then there's like three of them. And I'm like, what the fuck is that? And so I go look around the corner and there's these three, this family blowing shofars oh and i'm just so i I literally wandered over and i was like hey uh what what you doing there (laughs) what 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 what's going on and they're like oh it's blank it's such and such day and uh we're this we're whatever sect we are so we're out blowing shofars and the kids looked mortified Just so miserable. Did not want to be there. Why, Dad's making us do this. Please, someone oh, call Child no. Protective Services. <laughs> That's amazing. 
<laughs> but just and then it was just this little drone in the background of the rest of our time there. <laughs> it was very funny. Uh, uh, all there right. you go. They, okay, blow your little horn, I guess. That's that's cute. cute. It's totally cute. Oh, uh, so I'm gonna take us to Pennsylvania, where we are not gonna talk about the Senate race between Dr. Oz and the what, the football player? <laughs> What's Fenneman? I don't remember. Anyway. It's the Lieutenant Governor. Uh, that, one's, that one's the one that's getting all of the attention. Yeah. But uh, the governor's race is actually uh, very interesting. Uh, the, the Democrat running for governor of Pennsylvania is, a, is their former attorney general, or their current attorney general, Josh Shapiro. Now, we've mentioned Mr. Shapiro on the show before because it was him... And it was his leadership that brought about the grand jury investigation into the Catholic Church's hmm. sexual abuses. Oh, wow. Okay. And back in 2018, when, uh, or, well, 2018 is when it, was fi- when it finally came out. Uh, and, you know, the, it was a, there was this huge report uh, about, you know, more than 300 priests accused of, like, more than, uh, of abusing more than 1,000 children. Mm. And then after mm. the fact, almost 2,000 more victims had come forward. Mm. Uh, so this was, so, you know, this is the guy that blew the doors off of that. Right. And literally, that is a scary thing for a politician to do, uh, to piss off one of the biggest, re- you know, religions in the state. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but he did it. Uh, and good God bless him for doing it, because... Jesus Christ, what we learned in that was astonishing. And, you know, obviously we also learned about how much the church had done to cover it all up mm-hmm. and how often, you know, how often rather than, you know, they, they wouldn't even discipline the, the priest involved. They'd just move them to another pl- parish and the cycle starts again. Hope for the best. Right? Uh, but, but secretly know you're going to get the worst. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, uh, there, the uh, there's a guy named Bill Donahue, who is the head of the Catholic League, mm-hmm. who is incensed about Shapiro running for uh, governor, wants to make sure he doesn't win, and has come out with uh, a pretty solid defense of the church uh, in 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 sort of talking about all of this, um, which uh, boils down to. Just a few ideas, a few basic ideas, which, uh, you know, the, I'm going to read it sort of how Hemant Meta over at Only Sky presents it, because I think it's pretty funny. Uh, number one, many, several of the alleged offenders weren't even priests, which is misleading. They were almost all priests, but, but a few of them weren't. Uh, point number two was that most of the victims were adolescents, not children. So why, why are we getting all up in arms about it? You know? Mm. <laughs> they're, they're probably like 12 or something. That's fine. And then the last one is that it was just allegations. These weren't proven in court. So, uh, you, you know, three, you know, thousands of people probably are lying is, is <laughs> I probably where he's going. Right. 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 Hmm. Uh, so yeah. Uh, amazing that, that he is, uh, that this is the, the best tack that the Catholic league can take to, uh, to try and defend the church that literally like was caught doing the worst possible, possible thing. Right. Yeah. Anyway, uh, if you're in Pennsylvania, I don't know Josh Shapiro. I haven't looked into him other than this, but uh, uh, that speaks highly. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Well, there's that. Yeah, and you know the one to vote for in the Dr. Oz one, right? <laughs> not Oz? <laughs> is, the, is the answer not Dr. May, Oz? Maybe not Dr. Charcuterie. Or yeah. what, what was it? It wasn't charcuterie. It was. Oh no! It was. A, it was um, a. Oh, oh. What's the word for crudite? A crudite, Doctor Crudite. Doctor Crudite. 
Uh, well, that's actually, uh, uh, from that story to this story is an interesting segue. Um, mm. Because it has to do with, and we've talked about this case uh, in Arizona against the uh, Church of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints, um, and an the Mormons, <laughs> and an abuse case. Oh, okay. uh, you know what I'm talking about, right? Where the the abuser had talked to his bishop and confessed what he was up to. The bishop right. calls the the abuse helpline the official the church's official abuse helpline right not not a government abuse helpline. No. not not any authorities nope um, lawyers for the church and is is told that uh he should not report this to the authorities yeah and uh and now there's a lawsuit about it it's years later obviously um and it's a horrible thing because it just it, because it was not you know reported to the authorities it went on the abuse continued of the years. father against his children yeah. for years. And uh, and now a news story has come out, uh, and we know who was on the other end of the line. Oh. By name. Oh. Uh, a prominent attorney for the Church of Jesus Christ and a Utah state lawmaker by the name of Merrill F. Nelson. Um, that sounds right. <laughs> I, I don't know who this person is, but that sounds right. Actually, that is the, that F, is the correct name. F. Merrill Nelson would have been. Oh, even better. Would have been more. Even more yeah. correct. <laughs> uh, he, uh, let's see. He took the initial call uh, from the bishop uh, and uh, had multiple conversations over a two-year span with two different bishops who knew about this particular case. These are all from call logs uh, that somehow the AP got their hands on. Um, Nelson was, um, obviously a Republican lawmaker in the state of Utah, um, elected in 2013. Uh, he announced his retirement earlier this year. So I think he's still technically a state legislator here and he works for Curtin McConkie, which is the church's fancy firm downtown. Um, and he's that we're going to hear, depending on how this AP thing blows over, Mm -hmm. We're going to hear about him being a, called to be a, a, an apostle of the church in three, <laughs> two, one. Depending on how big of a bullet he takes for. Right. Uh, or, I have a feeling. Or, or, or how, how like not a big deal this is. Oh, sure. Um, anyway, he, so this Nelson fellow advised uh, the bishop uh, to not report the abuse and told him that, quote, he could be sued if he reported. Uh, and the instruction by counsel uh, not to report uh, the abuser to the authorities was the law in Arizona, but Arizona's child sex abuse reporting law grants blanket legal immunity to anyone reporting child sex abuse or neglect. So this lawyer, who would have known that, told this guy the opposite. Huh. Obviously, <laughs> with only one purpose to protect the church. So the Arizona law, I guess it it does it actually, let's see, it says Arizona law generally requires clergy members to report child neglect and sexual abuse, but allows them to withhold information obtained during a spiritual confession. But it's about it allows them to. Right. right? They're allowed to. Yeah. It's just, that would be the worst person thing to do. Yeah. Yep. You, you're allowed to do it. You're just the worst person in the world. If you do. Why in God's name, how, like, how do you live with yourself? Yeah. Right. To know about abuse that's happening and you do nothing. You call a helpline. I mean, I guess the guy, he did do, here's the deal. The bishop called the helpline and the, and the church the, and that the he church trusted that he trusted said, uh, no, don't no, 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 you can't, not. you could get sued. You do not want to do this. That's so gross. When in fact, Arizona law gives you immunity, <laughs> blanket, oh my blanket God. legal immunity to anyone who reports. Well, what's abuse. this guy's name? I want to. I, I just want Merrill F. Nelson. He looks exactly like you think he does. F. Merrill. 
<laughs> you said F. Merrill, isn't it? Merrill F. Nelson. Okay, fine. I was making fun of. Him. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, I'm gonna. I we'll we'll close out with a new report uh, from a group called Campus Pride. Oh, uh, this okay. is this is a group that that is there to uh, to 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 sort of support LGBTQIA plus kids who are uh, who are in college. They basically, uh, you know, they are nationwide, perhaps even beyond the U.S., but I know, but mostly a nationwide organization, and they have come out with their dirty list. Ooh, uh, they've come out with their list of schools that are shitty to the the queer people. Yeah. Okay. And it is entirely unsurprising, but there it is. <laughs> um. Well, let's hear it, it has schools on it, such as uh, you know we talked recently about Seattle Pacific University mm. and the the big the big walkout mm -hmm. that their students did. Uh, that's on there. You will not be so shocked in any way to learn that all the campuses of the Brigham Young University Ooh. are on there. Yeah, did I, I do like that it it spells out. It's like Brigham Young University, Brigham Young Univers University, Idaho, Brigham Young University, Hawaii. Any Brigham Young universities that we might have missed? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Brigham Young University, Idaho would be the worst of them, right? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Probably. Um, but it also has some bigger universities. It's not shocking to know that it's mostly Christian universities. Uh, fewer than 10 of the almost 200 schools on the list uh, are either not Re affiliated with a religion or uh, don't list a re religious affiliation. Ah, okay. But places like Baylor University, hmm. uh, there's so there you know there are some big ones. I mean, obviously, so Bob Jones is going to be on there. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> Liberty Liberty University is going to be on yeah. there, or and Oral Roberts. Is. is that still a thing? It's still there. I look for it, Oral Roberts University in Tulsa, oh, yeah. Oklahoma. ORU is very much on there. Yeah, that's where Kathy it's Lee not... Gifford learned to sing. That's right. That's right. <laughs> uh, that's that's where she learned her oral whatever. <laughs> um, uh, I mean singing. Get your mind out of the gutter. Uh, the uh, it's not all Christian uh, and Mormon. <laughs> Oh, by the way, uh, also LDS Business College, which is now called Enzyme College. Oh, right. Okay. Uh, which is a Mormon, another Mormon college. That's definitely on there. Um, Yeshiva University is on there. Makes sense. So, uh, yeah. But but it is, I mean, these are the United States. So uh, you, you got a lot of uh, Christian stuff on there. Mm -hmm. Anything that's got the word Wesleyan in it, that's going to be on there. <laughs> Anything that's... Got the word Trinity something in it. Mm -hmm. That's going to be on there. I literally looked through and there were, uh, there, there's represented a school from every, that begins with every letter except Q and X. So that's remarkable. Basic, there's a lot. I think we need, we need to fix that, Dan. Get, get some Q and X university. Where, yeah, where's, uh, where's Quinton something university? And, Excellence in Christian Education University. Xavier <laughs> something something. So, yeah. I, I, if you were planning on going, to, if, if you are an LGBTQIA plus person or a, a, an affirming person, I hate to tell you, there's a whole list. Of, if you were hoping to go to uh, Moody Bible Institute or, you know, Multnomah University. And I guarantee you, though, Dan... Don't. There yeah. are gay people at those institutions who are there to change it from within. Yep. Or, or went there or, or went there to please their kids mm. or their parents yeah. rather and are just suffering. There were that. Yeah. 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 It, it, this, it is. I, I think, can we make it the official position of thank God I'm atheist? Don't change the organizations from within. Just get the fuck out and live a good life. <laughs> Just, I mean, it's preferable. I understand some people. They're there. 
Yeah. You know, whether it's an organization that they work for and they're just like, oh, put so much time into this place or whatever. I know. Right. I know. But you know what? Here's the thing. Transfer your credits. Go somewhere else. Yeah. And I know like BYU and all of these schools could do this. They're all they're mo- mostly private colleges. I know that BYU can and has revoked degrees that they have distributed. Yeah. It's true. So don't graduate from them. Yeah. I know that you want to, you, you know, you're there for whatever reason you're there for. Oh, it's cheap. Transfer the credits and graduate from a different university so that they can't take it away later on. Have you seen how expensive or not rather BYU is? It's absurd. Tuition <laughs> is so cheap. For, That's why people go. For Mormons. Yeah, for Mormons. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, if you uh, went to a university where you were not welcome, please feel free to write into us about it. Podcast at thankgodimatheist.com. Or call and leave us a voicemail message. The telephone number is 424 666 8442. Stick around. We have more show coming up. All right, Frank. Dan. Here we have televangelist Kenneth Copeland. Ooh, he's one of the good ones. <laughs> By which you don't mean good. He doesn't have evil eyes at all. No, no, no. He doesn't. He does Like, literally, anyone who could look at this guy's face and say, oh, I could, he could babysit my kids. <laughs> You you can't. You the minute you look into his eyes, you know, oh, I need to keep my children away from this guy. <laughs> um and he's got that that unnaturally weird colored hair. Yeah. Uh anyway, he is he is sitting sitting at a table this time. He's not standing up preaching. Mm-mm. He is talking about school shootings. The ser- in the it's an Im- States. it's an important topic. I'm glad and, to hear uh, somebody's talking about it. And he knows where, where the problem is. So let's, uh, let's, let's let him tell us, shall we? Devil has assignments. If you want to know what's happening in schools, go back to schools. Okay, so when did the devil get a geographic assignment to kill children in schools? The devil used one atheist woman. One who had one son, one demon-possessed woman by the name of Madeline Mm O'Hare and her son and Supreme Court people that didn't have what it took to stand up against her. And because of that one woman, today we don't have Bibles in school. We can't pray in schools anymore. The devil used that woman to open, to, to, to cripple our schools and open the door to the schools. And now the devil's going in there and killing children in schools. <laughs> can can you play it again so I can just hear him say schools one more time? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's a... Uh, he- He's just a peach. He's got it off. It's it's Madeline O'Hare's fault. Oh, I mean, it is. <laughs> it's not wrong. You you're gonna you're gonna say that she's to blame for school shootings? Oh no 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 for getting prayer out of schools. She is to be yeah, credited well, for, for getting official prayer out of schools. Yeah, 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 you can yeah, still yeah. pray in a school in the United States. Of sure, America. You, but it's just that the morning they can't be prayer. led by exactly. Yeah, yeah. She's she, he's correct. She's responsible for that. To yep. her credit, you. she got that done. But yeah, yeah. and now she's the one that's like <laughs> responsible for the school shoot, the school shootings. Yeah, dear God in heaven. I mean, wow. Well, it couldn't I be mean, a, a a a country that is uh, you know unraveling at the seams and there's has too many guns available. <laughs> couldn't possibly be that. No, it's it's the devil. The devil's doing it. Hmm. I, I, I remember when I was like a child. I was literally a child and I 
kind of, and, and I wanted to ride my friend's bike. I was a little kid. Okay. And I found, and he, you know, he had left it unattended. So I jumped on it and I rode it around the block. And then I came back and he found me and he was like, what are you doing? And I was like, uh, uh, the devil made me do it. You went there. Really? That's that, that was how I, that was how I excused myself. What? And what, what it, was the response? I think it was just sort of everyone was mutually weirded out. And then we just moved on with our lives. <laughs> But the point that I'm trying to make is the devil made anyone do it is a child's response to life. Yeah. Anyone who is a grown person who still uses that, it should be deeply embarrassed. Yeah. All right. Well, we have, uh, so we have some folks wrote into us. Uh, so let's jump to that. This one is unsigned, but it says, Dear fellas, longtime listener slash patron, first time writer inner. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to jump off a caller you had last week. The person that was talking about their acquaintance who considers himself a, quote, supremely logical right wing atheist. That made me think of a broader point uh, that is a problem even among the liberal leaning atheists. We must stop gatekeeping atheist communities with logic. Huh. Uh, as you know, Britney Spears came out as an atheist last week. Huh. I've seen se uh, I've several comments and communities online where people, okay, cis men, criticized her because she didn't arrive at her atheism logically, but rather through her experience of abuse at the hands of religion, as if that somehow negates her disbelief. Not everyone has the privilege of using cold, hard logic to dismiss religion. Of course, some people arrive at atheism on the logic train, and proud we are of all of them. That's a great Lebowski reference. Well done. <laughs> but some people arrive there through seeing injustices or experiences uh, or, or experiencing injustice themselves. And yes, even beginning by, quote, being mad at God before the logic sets in. And that's no less valid a reason uh, to be an atheist. People who have been raised in religion often have not been given the opportunity to develop the cognitive abilities to decompartmentalize their beliefs or examine them rationally. It takes a lot of introspection, a lot of courage, and a lot of emotional work to leave religion, and often, yes, trauma. Sometimes the logic doesn't come until later. Secondary to that point, some people are just feelings people, and that's great. The world and the atheist movement needs sensitive people right along with the logical ones. Lack of feelings and empathy is not a virtue, and when we paint it as one, we do a disservice to everyone in our already limited community. Hmm. I loved that idea. I loved yeah. that thought. Yeah. Because, yeah, I think, I think we do hit the logic thing. As a, as a community, we tend to go to, like, <laughs> look at all of our logical points about how religion is stupid. And then we're all shocked when the religious people don't go, oh, you're right. We shall now all, it's now a mass exodus. We're all leaving. Right. Uh, but guess yeah. what? It's, it's not all logic. There's more to humans than that. Yeah. There's also sort of self-awareness. Right. Yeah. And like your, I mean, because I mean, my, f I would say my first step out of the Mormon church was I haven't received the answers to prayer. Right. right. That I was promised. Right. And what does that exactly. mean? Right. Yeah. Um, and so it was a lack of an experience that had been sort of, again, promised by the faith. And so, yeah, I think that's, 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 I, I love that perspective. I think it's an important one. And uh, yeah, I like yeah. it. I'm, I'm right there with you. Yep. Uh, un, unnamed uh, writer in her. Friend, friend and listener. Um, all right. So Taylor also wrote into us uh, talking about my story last week of the, the, uh, the guy who was doing a shooter training uh, an active shooter training <laughs> yes. and told nobody and scared the bejesus out of a whole bunch of perfectly innocent yeah uh, catholic charity workers <clears throat> anyway uh taylor says 
Dan's story about the quote preparedness training involving more than a little more than a little fake blood and horrific traumatic LARPing had me recovered uh, recovering a memory from my time working for the local government. Three or four years ago, I worked at local government office in Salt Lake City, hmm. and we too had an active shooter training. Oh God! We were informed in van- in advance, thank God, and a few of us were recruited for the acting roles. Hmm. The trainers were professionals who do this sort of thing all the time. This sort of thing being rehearsing employees of of their clients to act as victims of the shooting (laughs) and to engage the other employees in an action-packed, fake blood-filled chase through their cubicle farms, herding them into watching their co-workers be be gunned down in horrifying graphic imitations of real-life violence. (laughs) That's so dumb. So bad. It's no. so awful. I opted to go the to go to the training. I opted, sorry, not to go to the training uh, and had to fill the preparedness training requirement through a boring PowerPoint presentation put on by a local sheriff on another day. <laughs> but boy howdy, I will take boring PowerPoints over watching Chris from three cubicles down overact his screams of terror while bullet blanks are thrumming through the hallways of the place. I, of the place I have to go to work every day. Yeah. Anyway, I just, just wanted to let you know that this sort of training is very common, apparently, and sanctioned by your own local government. So hooray for that. I'm the a- only part that made Dan's story worse was the complete lack of notice uh, for those poor people that those poor people were given on how the training would go down. Yeah. To be honest, though, from what my coworker said, it's not any less traumatic when you have the heads up. I'm guessing it's a little less traumatic, but I get the point. Yeah, you don't have people that, jumping out of second story windows. It's yeah. <laughs> trying to get away. But it sounds like I mean, that is just a horrific thing to put people through. <sighs> don't put people through that. If you are an employer, this is a public service announcement. If you are an employer and you want people to be prepared, mm-hmm. don't do this. This is not the thing. Yeah, you need to arm them. Right. Talk That's through the... it and then give everyone, uh, you know, give one guy a bat with the, the barbed wire on it and another person a machete. No, you give them guns. Okay, fine. Dis- Hand out guns Distribute to guns throughout the office. You have a shooter come in. Everybody takes aim. What you a want couple is innocent, Yes, a couple innocent people might get shot, but it's worse than the bloodbath that would have happened otherwise. <laughs> right. I, these these uh, things, yeah. Sorry, everyone. That maybe wasn't the <laughs> best way to handle that. But like, this is it. It's not on our topic. I have to say, but um, I'm appalled. Yeah, and I'm, this is the. I am so glad I don't work in an office with a lot of people yeah. where this could even possibly be, where anyone something. would even remotely consider yeah. doing this. Oh my god. Yeah, thanks, Taylor. And well done choosing the the boring route instead of yeah, like smart. Yeah, that's the day I you definitely were, would you not. You were the be smart aware. one. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Oh my goodness. Well, do we have some folks to thank? We do, Dan. We have a couple new patrons over on Patreon. Uh, we have a new teacher by the name Good. of O'Bran. Oh. hmm And a new priest by the name of Lawrence. Hooray! So thank you to the both of you. If you'd like to join them, you can do so. Go to our website, thankgodimatheist.com, and click on the support tab. And as always, Dan, we have our top donor to thank, our Lord and Savior, Davis! Stick around, there's more show coming up. So Frank, Dan, uh, I'm going to tell a quick story, and this was, and and this story comes with a little insider information, a little 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 scoop for the travelers out there. Oh, okay. Uh, if you ever want, if you're in London <laughs> and you want to go see the uh, the Tower of London, <laughs> but you don't want to pay the 18 pounds or whatever it is to get in. Okay, probably 25 by now. And you don't want to stand in the line. Go on a Sunday, dress up in in uh, church going style clothes, 
and just tell the yeoman warder, the beef eater at the gate, oh, I'm just going to church. Uh-huh. Find out when it is. Right. Uh, there's a there's a chapel in the grounds called St. Peter Ad Vincula, I think. Oh. Uh, which okay. means St. Peter in Chains. Yeah. And if you go there, if you do that, they just wave you through and uh, and then do go to church because I find that fascinating. But but if you do, uh, you'll find one thing that is particularly interesting because uh, this is in the Tower of London's grounds. It is on crown-owned grounds. This is owned by the crown. Oh. And, uh, and so this chapel is in there and the service will end with a rousing chorus of now god save the king right it was then god save the queen mm. uh, as as you all know uh the world lost a colonizer this week uh in in elizabeth the 2nd so uh the, all of that is to say that it is, that's a very it's a very weird thing to, to see everyone singing God Save the Queen in a church. But it turns out that she was, in fact, the head of the Church of England. It's remarkable, isn't it? It's a very weird thing. <laughs> well, I mean, there's some history there. There's a reason for it. Yeah, there's a lot of history there. Uh, going back all the way to Henry VIII. Yeah. Uh, because here's the thing. The, the, the British monarch... Uh, has the title of Defender of the Faith and Supreme Governor of the Church of England. Supreme now, Governor? Supreme Governor of the Church of England. Wow. Anyone else who tries to govern it better just yield to to the monarchs governing because <laughs> they are supreme. <laughs> the, the funny thing is, now you, when you and I were talking earlier, mm-hmm. uh, before we re- started recording, yeah. uh, you, you were aware that, that uh, the queen was the defender of the faith. Yes. And, and you'll, you'll tell a little, one of her little titles. About, that's right. Uh, what's funny is that that title was first bestowed on Henry VIII oh. by the Pope by, back when Henry wow. VIII was Catholic. Was a Catholic. No. Was still, like into the whole Catholic thing. Anyone who knows English history knows that uh, then Henry VIII kind of didn't. He had a bit of a falling out. There was a bit of a kerfuffle with the Catholic Church. And that's when he broke off and uh, and started his own thing, the, you know, the Church of England. But he kept the title that was given to him by the Pope. He just he just he liked it, I guess. Well, it's a great so, title, but this he, isn't that funny though, right? Because it's all about him being not granted a divorce, right? Right. Isn't that what it's all about? So the, I think that's the story. The yeah. founding of the church of England is so that someone can get a divorce. Yeah. And then they promptly don't allow divorce. Famously, they didn't allow <laughs> divorce. Like, you know, like the queen's sister who couldn't get a divorce or no, she couldn't marry a divorced man. Or something like that, right? <laughs> They're very snooty about and it's about okay. Things. All right, that's funny. That's ironic. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, he invented the 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 Church of England, and it has <laughs> continued since then. And the sovereigns of of the country uh, seems to be uh, just it, it. They they just get to be the head of. They're the Pope of the C of E. Yeah, that's that's it's kind very of weird. Strange. That's kind of really weird. But now, now the, the queen has has passed, and there's yeah. King Charles the Third. Yeah, we found out he's not the head of the the, the church yet. No, not yet. Yeah. As of this recording, yeah, uh, because all of that investiture, all of that uh, the important. Uh, hooty who happens <laughs> during coronation, which they haven't even set the date for yet. So yeah, he he has to get his fancy hat before he's allowed to be in charge of. He has to be the... anointed with holy oils, <laughs> as it were. Yeah, huh. I just think I you know it's so funny because everything about the British royalty 
is symbolic. There is literally no longer anything that is like substantially meaningful uh, about the British royals. Like, you know, you and I were talking about it before, and we were talking about the fact that, you know, uh, uh, when Parliament chooses someone who's going to be the who, the uh, prime minister, prime minister, that person has to sort of march down the mall to, to Buckingham Palace and literally ask permission to form a government. At which point, the monarch has to just say yes. Like, there's literally, if they tried to say no, mm. there would be no monarchy anymore. Right. You were saying that they had that the monarch has the uh, the right, the power to dissolve our parliament. Is my understanding? Yeah, yeah. They, they could they could dissolve parliament. Try it. <laughs> Go ahead, Chucky, uh, Chuck the Third. Oh my god! Just give it a shot and see see how much, how pro royals the country is at that point. I'm starting to get the sense that you're not very pro royal, Dan. You're not, uh, you wouldn't be called a monarchist. I, 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 no one's accused me of that yet. <laughs> of being a, of being a, a, a pro royal person. Oh. Though I do have a friend who worked uh, specifically for then Prince Charles oh. for several years. Oh, so wow. She has some stories. She was a butler. Really? She buttled. No way. That's remarkable. Yeah, served the queen one time. She's, yeah. Ah. That's from, I don't even know how one becomes a butler. I I don't know how an American becomes a well. I do know because she was a caterer, hmm. and then there was a there was the big uh the big wedding with uh with Prince uh William, mm -hmm. and she she was hired to work the wedding, and then uh, they liked her and they brought her in. Still, ain't that some that, ain't that some stuff? That's that's crazy. She had completely the wrong accent for a butler. She did. She did. <laughs> Can't have it. American must have gotten a kick accent. out of it. <laughs> right. Anyway, I, it's just, it's just, you know, it's funny because we live in a country where a bunch of Christians are literally out to destroy any separation there is between church and state. Mm. And that country has achieved some, a lot of separation of church and state, largely by sort of taking away all of the power of the one person that absolutely combines church and state <laughs> completely. Uh, I like, just think that, the, well, it is interesting because like the whole separation of church and state thing, right? There are probably a lot of countries in this world that have official, you know, you know, church of England right. or church of whatever. Right. Or Islam is their official religion, yeah. or Hinduism, or whatever. Yeah, that that maybe goes less in the direction of where I was trying to go. But okay. I was going to say there's a, a lot of you know places that have like the Church of whatever country it is, and that are the Church of Sweden, right? Oh, sure, sure, sure. Um, I see what that you're that have um, probably far more secular societies than right. ours, which has yeah. an official separation of church and state in the constitution. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, yeah. And, and literally like a lot, so many of the, the writings of, uh, the early, the, the early framers of our country. Yeah. were about like, we have no official religion. Absolutely not. Never, ever, ever. Right. Um, but they're trying to undo that now. Well, they just, they realized it, it was, it was a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> it was, of course we need Jesus everywhere all the time. Yeah. Of course we do. Right? Prayer. Uh, prayer helps so much, Dan. It helps. It, right? It keeps it, the guns, the shoot, the shooting out of the schools. Yeah. Yeah. You know what we need to do? Put prayer back in the fucking schools and shut them up. Just do it, do I, it, do it, do a <laughs> trial period. Say, okay, you That's know what? A, Let's try it your ways. You can have prayer in the schools for three years and let's watch, let's watch school shootings. Let's that is see a how terrible, terrible idea. No, that is a t because literally once you give them that, 
it's so hard to take it back away, even if it's planned to take it back away. It's a pilot program. No, no. <laughs> well, all you need to do is go, oh, right. So if there were prayer, so if prayers work, then there's been no shootings at any churches, right? That w- prayers work. So definitely nobody's ever, sh- nobody shoots up any churches in the United States, right? Because that's how you know prayers don't work. Well, but see, churches are different than schools, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> That is true. That's how it's supposed to be. All right. Well, uh, if you are a huge fan of the Royals and would like to give me the dressing down that I deserve for thinking that it is an absolutely absurd and stupid institution that should be buried along with the Queen, please feel free to write into us, podcast at thankgodimatheist.com. Or call and leave us a voicemail message. Telephone number is... Uh, 424-666-8442. Yeah, go to the Facebook page, facebook.com slash TGI Atheist, and click the like button. And if you'd like to join one of our members' only lounges, you can do so by going to our website, thankgodimatheist.com slash members only. Thanks so much to the Red Rock Hot Club for the use of their fine music. And thanks to Gordon Johnston for the use of his music. And thanks to all of you friends for tuning in. We sure do appreciate it. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.